Hey everybody, welcome back to another movie review. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content on the channel as of late. It's been a hot minute since we've done a movie review on this channel. Uh, it's, yeah, it's been, it's been a little bit. Um, uh, let me adjust my camera here. There we go. Um, yeah, um, last one we did, I believe, was Origin, I think. Yeah, Origin, which I really didn't like. Um, and uh, I skipped out on a few mystery movies just because uh, I financially just a little tight. And um, I, mean, I, I didn't miss out on much. The other two were Land of Bad, which was um, some throwaway Russell Crowe thing, you know, like Russell Crowe just kind of doing. Like Russell Crowe's like a second rate Liam Neeson, it seems. At least, I don't know, it seems like that's like his go to. Um, and then, uh, what was it? Lisa Frankenstein was the most recent one, which I didn't give a shit to see that. Um, but I decided to go out for this one because I had a feeling it might have been a different movie. I was anticipating it to be Perfect Days, um, and it's actually a movie that I really want to see. I'm hoping that I might check it out this week. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but... Actually, what I ended up seeing was a film called Ordinary Angels, which I have no idea. Oh, wait, actually, I do know who directed it. It was uh, Joe Gunn, I think. I think that's the name. Um, who I'm not sure is related to James Gunn, because they both have the same last name. Um, I'm not sure if they're related or not. I'll have to check, but who knows, but... Stars Hilary Swank and Alan Richard Richardson, I think they say his name. Um, Hilary, Hilary Swank is a raging alcoholic, and uh, she's you know just going in and out of clubs. It seems she's works at a hair salon with her friend. Her friend becomes very concerned uh, for her well-being, and uh, throughout through this, uh, Alan Richardson. And his situation at home, uh, his wife uh, passed away a couple of years ago, and he's now tasked with taking care of the two daughters that her mother, uh, that the wife uh, left behind before she passed away. And one of the daughters is in very desperate need for a liver transplant. And throughout uh, the uh, uh, throughout the years, the the father tries to make ends meet, trying to get money, and uh, trying to um, wait on, uh, the waiting list for river trans liver, uh, transplants. Um, and, uh, out of nowhere comes Hillary Swank, who reads in the newspaper that, you know, what's going on with the family. I don't know how the newspaper obtained that information because it seemed that the family is very private, specifically the father, um, but whatever. Um, gets a hold of that information and decides, hey, what the hell? Uh, I've got nothing else to do, apparently, so let's just go and try to help out this kid and find some excuse as to why I need to be here, why the audience needs to be here, and why generally the story needs to exist. Um, so just based on that little introduction, uh, little, this is like almost three minutes, but um, based on that little introduction, you can glean as to what I thought about Ordinary Angels. Um, and by the title of the film, you can glean what kind of movie we're getting into here. Uh, a Christian-based movie. Now, for anybody who knows Christian-based movies, um, for lack of a better word, they're shitty. Um, pretty, pretty bottom-of-the-barrel type stuff. Um, last Christian-based movie that I ever saw was Father Stew with uh, Mark Wahlberg, and I fell asleep a couple times. Um, I, yeah, dozed off quite a bit. Um, and I will say the difference between Father Stu and Ordinary Angels is that Ordinary Angels, I was awake throughout the entire film. Uh, Father Stu, I just could not just for the life of me care. With this, I cared mostly to do, or actually almost always to do, with the absolute absurdity and the absolute exaggeration of events that the film is presenting because it's based on a true story, which is a nice film way of saying that uh, we're just telling our own version of that story. We're just using the material as a way to get you in the theater um, and to make it look nice on the poster. Um, because 
what you get is a superhero. You get, that's what you get with Hilary Swank. It's essentially a superhero. She can do anything. She can apparently uh, uh, just wipe out, wipe away four hundred thousand dollars worth of medical bills. Uh, she can get five planes. Five planes. I'm not kidding. I thought it was a joke in the movie, but it's it's real. Uh, she can get five planes, uh, just in case. Literally, that's what she said. Just in case we need it, you know. Uh, she can obtain helicopters. Uh, she can, um, she can uh, do a whole bunch of stuff, and she gets all up in this dude's business. Literally, just invites herself into this family, and at no point, at no point whatsoever, until it's convenient for the plot and convenient for the drama, does anyone think to themselves, you know, this is really fucking creepy. Um, who the fuck are you? And why are you in my house? Why are you in my business? Why are you talking to my daughters? Get the fuck out of here. That was my immediate thought when she first stepped into the house. I was like, uh, no. Take your ass out of my house. You're not invited here. I don't care how much money you're about to give me. Get the fuck away from me. Um, so, like, just, the story is just pure cheese. It is pure pure cheese, pure service level, pure just blandness. Like, you have to be so, like, like, my theater was chuckling throughout it because it's one of those, like, you have to turn your brain off, you know? If you apply real sense to it, then it's just, hor like, it, just bad. Like, the writing in this is just, like, it's, it's like screenplay 101. It's like, how do we make this the nicest, like, like, the, the problem with, like, Christian films is that everything has to be uh, convenient. Everything has to be um, laid out for them. There's no stakes. There's no this and that. They, they try to build stakes, but it's like, you know, the fucking outcome. It's so obvious. I actually thought that Hilary Swank would give up her liver, uh, but I actually was giving the film more credit than, um, than it deserved. Um, what actually happened was actually something much more absurd, which was that... Uh, which actually, by the way, is not actually how it happened. You know how I know? Because the movie decided to show me at the very end what really happened. And I'll tell you what the film tells you, and then what the credits, which show you real footage of the event, actually tell you. So here's what the movie tells you of how things wrapped up. This whole dilemma with her trying to get a liver transplant, and how they end up, you know, at the end. So, the movie tells you that there is a huge snowstorm, huge snowstorm, unbearable, nobody can drive, no planes, nothing can get out there, um, and that did happen, there was definitely a snowstorm, that, that, that sort of thing did happen, but here's what the movie will tell you, um, Alan Richardson will take his daughter, keep in mind, who's having, you know, liver, liver problems and is in very, very, you know, critical condition, decides to take her ass out in the cold weather and to drive around aimlessly with the hopes to get to where exactly? Who knows? Um, ends up in the middle of some forest and backtracks. It's now pitch black, dark outside. The snowstorm is still wind, like just crazy. And meanwhile, throughout all this, Hilary Swank is calling the news, uh, the news to get a helicopter out there and some bo some bozo just says, hey, I can do it because I had 22 years of experience in the in the military. Because obviously in the in the military, we've had to deal with snowstorms and military experience and snowstorms obviously coincide with each other because that makes perfect sense. So the guy with 22 years of experience under his belt flies the helicopter. Surprise, surprise, there's problems. What? I thought you had 22 years of experience, buddy. What's the problem? Um, and uh, the... The, the uh, uh, resolution to how they fix the problem is, hey, let's all turn on our headlights. Even though it's a blizzard, even though it's a snowstorm, you can't see anything. Even if you shine your bright lights at something, it's still blind. You can't see the ground. You can't see anything. And then they also add, hey, let's also put blankets, or not blankets, our jackets on the floor so that they could see it, so they could see where they where to land, even though there is snow flying through the air and you cannot see anything. It's literally just fog. It's just little things here and there. We can't, there's no landing point to be precise. And then the thing starts to land. And then as the thing lands, of course, it's 
fucking jackets. It's nothing secure to the ground. It flies all around, and Alan Richardson's character looks up and sees, and sees a jacket flying in the, in the sky. And the daughter looks up, and they both are like, wow, jackets do fly, or says something like that. And, of course, that's when the Christian thing comes in, like, wow, wow, God is good, huh? Wow, God is just real good. And helicopter lands, and then, of course, flies off to the hospital, and the girl is saved. Yay! Now, here's what really happened. It happened at daytime. It happened at, at daytime. It, it didn't happen at nighttime. There was no snowstorm. There was no, oh my God, look at Jesus himself. No, there was no uh, jackets. There was no this and that. It all happened at daytime. And you know why the movie didn't show you at daytime? Because that's just too boring. So we have to embellish the hell out of the story. And, and not just, uh, just from that alone. Obviously, we have the girl with the extraordinary abilities in Hilary Swank, who can literally do anything, which I'm pretty sure if you do your research is pure and utter bullshit. Um, you cannot wipe medical bills like that, especially $400,000 worth of it. Doesn't matter how you present your case, no matter how manipulative you look, okay, you're not going to do that. That's not how this works. So sorry, don't buy that. Um, you cannot obtain five planes. That doesn't work. Um, you cannot fly a helicopter in a snowstorm and think that you can still land at the hospital perfectly fine and not have any worries whatsoever. Well, well, wait, the guy has 22 years of experience under his belt. Like, what I'm trying to illustrate here with all this is that the story is just filled with conveniences. And, it just, and it's filled with just this utter stupidity, thinking that... If we just embellish and exaggerate everything for the for the pure, pure desire for dramatic um, welling, like, oh, here comes the music, and oh my god, like, that's just, that's the, the motive of the movie. It thinks in doing so that it will deliver this powerful and moving scene, when all it did is just make itself laughable and just purely and utterly stupid. Um... The, the the one gleaming element to it, I will say, is Alan Richardson. I actually thought he was capable in this, surprisingly enough. With the scenes that he had, I thought he was I thought he was fine in it. I actually could buy him as a grieving father. It it actually it, it seemed pretty you know, pretty uh, uh I wouldn't say real, but it, it felt pretty um solid in, in presentation. Hilary Swank is also fine performance wise. Um, I mean, she seems to be pushing that accent quite a bit. Um, like, she always got to be talking like that because, you know, that's what the type of character... That's where the, it's like, she just... Okay. Um, but from... It's just ridiculous screenplay from the pure and utter cheap uh, construction of story. It's just so funny and not meant to be funny and so cheesy and so dull and and, and just like I, I kept laughing by how many times Hillary Swank inserted herself into this situation I was waiting for her to be arrested like the real story of this I mean I mean not the real story but the real handling of the situation would be hey get out of my house I've said to get out of my house. Okay, I'm going to actually call authorities now because you're just some total stranger who is inserting herself into my business and completely obsessing over something that you have no connection to whatsoever. Um, like, the one person, like, the one point in the movie where it actually, um, where, it, where I actually thought, wow, this actually is going to maybe turn around. They're actually going to do something maybe, you know, maybe a little bit interesting here, which is the point of when someone addresses the elephant in the room. Hey, you know, this is addict behavior. This is not you doing a good deed. This is addict behavior. This is impulsive. This is ob obsessive. You need help. And there's a downfall period. There's a point where she does end up in a facility, where she does end up getting help. And I was thinking, wow, okay, maybe we're actually going to move in a different direction here. And no, we have to go to the helicopter sequence. We have to somehow get prevent a defy the somehow drive a a a a, a super suited vehicle at high speeds through a snowstorm I'll pray to god they don't hit a vehicle or a, a tree that's fallen over because they established that also as a 
as the one thing that was preventing him from getting from the hospital. Like, like there, there are loads of stupid in this movie and loads of ridiculousness in it, loads of embellishment and the, like, the very, very occasional mentions of Jesus and religion just to pat it out, just to remind us that, hey, this is also a Christian film. And just like just how I feel about religion and the whole concept of, of that, of Jesus itself, I just could not believe a single thing that this movie had to offer, except the performance that Alan Richardson was putting on, which seemed to be the most authentic element to the film. And it seemed like we were focusing on the wrong character to start, because what you get from this is a story that, while well intended, I... I, I I will backtrack. I will like settle for a minute. It does. It, it is. It is well intended. They 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 give a mention to you know to to, to websites for helping people with children who are also deal, dealing with um, with uh, any uh, uh, liver liver problems or anything like that. You know it. Uh, it's nice. I mean, there's a nice. There's a nice. Uh, you know. Uh, there's a nice intention there. But the execution of this story and just the overall presentation of the story is just, ugh, just, like, yeah, I think I got it out, I think. I actually just, like, before I uh, recorded this, uh, I actually just caught the guy that I sat with, and I actually apologized to him because I was talking quite a bit through the movie because... Because, like, just everything about it was just, like, just dumb. Like, everything was just stupid. And I just kept, like, verb, like verbally, like, like presenting it, just saying, like, what the fuck? What the, what, the, what, what, what? I just apologized to him, just saying, yo, dude, sorry if I ruined the movie for you. Seemed, seemed like a decent guy. And he's, he's like, hey, no, it's fine. He was giving me, like, a dead eye when I, like, walked out. So I was like, oh, shit. But, um, yeah, uh... If you like your sap, if you like your uh, manipulate manipulative uh, type of deal, if you like your cheese, if you like, I don't like, if you, if you like your little spurts of Jesus, I don't know. I'll put it this way, like, the, it's 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 sort of like religion itself. You kind of have to be in a vulnerable spot. A very, 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 very vulnerable spot in order to take any of this seriously. If you have some brains and you're in a good spot, you realize how dumb this is. So. And how completely irrational it is in design, in concept, in execution. And I would be a, a little offended if I was one of the people in this story, like one of the real people, because they clearly had embellished it. They they literally outed themselves at the end with that footage, with the real life footage of the daytime shot of the helicopter. They literally outed themselves. Like they just didn't care. They just they were like that literally at the beginning of the movie they made it a point to say this is based on a true story. And then at the very end, right after the helicopter flies off in the dark we sh we show you the real life footage of the daytime sh of the helicopter coming down not in the dark not at nighttime in a giant ass snowstorm no when the snow has died down then we brought the helicopter down and daytime yeah so anyways those are my thoughts on ordinary angels um more like ordinary creatures i mean what the fuck like she's just i would have arrested her i seriously would have arrested her by a certain by the first time she walked in my door i'd be like okay get out of here okay no all right we're gonna call police like you just yeah so completely embellished and just for the most part just dumb just dumb so, but let me know your thoughts on Ordinary Angels if you guys get a chance to see it. I think it comes out sometime this month. I don't know. Um, but 
yeah but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below your thoughts on christian based movies i just there's just so much like you there, there's a reason why they get a there's, there's a reason why they get shit on all the time because they're just so fucking dumb and they cannot take any of what they're saying uh seriously sorry this car just backed up like crazy i don't know what the hell just happened but um but anyways thank you guys for tuning in but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and yeah so that's gonna be it for me guys thank you guys for tuning in and until then i will catch you guys in the next video bye